Well, welcome back. Uh, we're looking at the topic of seeding an idea project today. Um, this is going to be the first of three short videos on the topic of seeding an idea project. Today we're going to be looking at seeding an idea project manually. The second video will be seeding an idea project using a database. And the third video will be seeding an idea project using a couple of engines. Let's open up Aquarium. Why do we need to seed an idea project at all? Uh, because it gets the engine, sorry, it gets the project off the ground quickly. You could just um, press start idea here. I've made a, a, a project on the Latvian Gambit, and as you can see, there are no analyzed tasks whatsoever, and there are no tasks in the queue. And if I pressed start idea up here, it would take quite a long time to get all of the cores uh, employed, uh, and also even though they might eventually all get jobs, they probably wouldn't be analyzing the positions which I'm interested in. Uh, the program would kind of meander around doing its own thing for a while, and it would take it really quite a long time before it's useful. So seeding an idea project helps. You can seed manually, which we're going to do today. You can seed using a database where you dump games on the um, uh, on the program, and you can use an engine to, to um, uh, kick-started as well, but it's really giving the project a leg up, a head start, so it can uh, be efficient right from the very first minute of analysis. Manually seeding an idea project is the slowest of the three ways by by a country mile, but it is also the most interactive, and IDEA stands for Interactive Deep Engine Analysis. And the great thing about manual seeding is it gets you hands-on and dirty, as it were, with the project, so you really are engaging and interacting. I'm going to show you how to do it now. So here's the Latvian Gambit. What moves are we interested in? My hunch is that 95 is a really big move, but also pawn takes pawn. That might be good. Bishop c4 looks good because it's hitting the uh, the weak diagonal. Um, knight c3 develops a piece and defends e4. d4 might be interesting, blowing the position open. What else? d3 looks somewhat tame, but I suppose we could analyse uh, analyze it. OK, let's just look at one line to see where it goes. Knight e5. Black has to be careful here, because I think white is threatening queen h5 check. For example, d6, queen h5 check, g6, knight takes pawn, knight f6. Uh, this is getting a bit complicated, but I suppose white could probably just play queen h4 with a good game, I'm guessing. But anyway, th there's a line I've just thought off the top of my head. Let's see how many positions I've thought of. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are no tasks in the queue but I've thought of 12 positions myself. If I go to this big red button here, which says all positions, and it's got four push pins above it, and I press it, hey presto, 12 tasks get added to the queue. And if I then went on and pressed start idea, those positions would be analyzed in order. So the computer has got jobs to do right from the word go. This is a very slow way of adding positions to the analysis queue, but it is interactive, as I said. I'm analysing exactly what I'm interested in. And it's great for me, because it, it gets my own brain going. I'm thinking for myself. I'm understanding the position, because I'm saying to myself, yeah, but what if black does this? Yeah, but what if that? What if this? And so on. And it, it gets you thinking. And that's important if you uh, want to understand what's going on. So that's how you manually seed an idea project. Next time we'll look at database seeding, and then after that we'll look at uh, engine seeding. Thanks for watching.